Hey guys, Karen V from Valori Huntress here. So today I was gonna go over species. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Other people have come to me and asked about, well, I have never heard of this animal. Like, why are you talking about it? So for all the people that are extremely new for hunting, this video is for you. So I'm just gonna go over a few of the species. So let's start with the venison category. Now the venison category has multiple different things that are different species. Alrighty, so first off, I'm actually going to start with antelope, also known as pronghorn. These animals are located in places like the Midwest, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Pinch of California, Nevada, they're pretty much everywhere. So when it comes to antelope, they're also known as pronghorn. I will also have another video later on about the difference between horns and antlers and why antelope is the one like right there in the middle that's not really one, but not really the other. It's a bit of both. It's a weird animal. Antelope, I've also hunted for them. They're a beautiful creature. Their hair falls out really easily. When you were talking about a boy one, you call it a buck. When you're talking about a girl one, you call it a doe. When they're like a year or two year old, they're a yearling. Next up is black-tailed deer, also known as Colombian black-tailed deer. Now these deer are located in like California, where I'm at. Now they're not that big compared to mule deer. Black-tailed deer are local for me. There is also the Sitka black-tailed deer completely different subspecies of deer. I said that right, I think. Now, Sitka black-tailed deer is located in Alaska. They are Alaskan black-tailed deer. Now, those guys are different and live in a completely different territory than Colombian black-tailed deer. Now, there's also Colombian white-tailed deer, which I'm not very familiar with white-tailed deer. I'm hoping to go eventually and learn a lot more as I go. When you're hunting, you will always learn new things. Always, 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 always. So there are multiple different types of white-tailed deer, like subspecies wise, but we'll get into that later. My personal favorite is mule deer. Now mule deer are the newest kind of of the deer generation. It's still been around for a long time, but compared to other species, they're newer to the game. Those guys are mainly in the mountain areas of like the Rocky Mountains. So Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, Nevada, California, places like that. Another species really quick that I'm gonna touch on, there's also coos deer, which is this guy, and axis deer, which is this guy. And those guys are in their own little territory, which I'll explain more about those guys later because some people consider those exotic. I'm gonna have a different episode on exotic animals that are located in North America. So don't think it's like you have to go to Africa or Europe or New Zealand, this is still North America animals that I'll be talking about, but they're considered exotic. So really quickly, there's gonna be axis deer and coos deer. I'll talk more about those guys later. But when you are just like antelope slash pronghorn, you are going to refer to the boys as bucks and the girls as does and fawns as the babies of all of those or yearlings for the little bit older ones. Next thing is moose. There's actually four species of moose in North America alone. There is the Alaskan moose, which Yep, you can guess it. It's mainly in Alaska, but it does reach into Canada. There is the Canadian, which I thought was just one species at one point in time, but it's actually two species split up between the northern and the eastern. The northern moose is mainly in Canada and it's like high north area. Then there is the eastern moose, which is still Canadian, but it also reaches down into Maine and Minnesota and places like that. Then my favorite, the one that I've actually shot is a shira moose. And shira moose are in the lower 48 states. So they are Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Utah. They still do reach in, into Canada starting to come into Nevada. That's nuts, huh? So that one is a lot smaller. They are the smallest of the moose species where Alaskan is the biggest. Then there's going to be elk. There's actually three species of elk that are still alive to this day. There was a fourth, but that one has been long past. Now these four species are tule, which are mainly located in California. They're not very common. I actually have tule elk where I'm at, which I'm very fortunate to be able to see them. Um, I've never been able to hunt them because it is so hard to get that tag around here. Their species is not doing that great after all of our fires, but anyway, that's, that's a different topic for a different day. Then there's gonna be Roosevelt, which is California and Oregon. 
And then there's the wonderful Rocky Mountain, which is, oh geez, pretty much all in the Rocky Mountains. Let's just make it easier. So those guys are pretty cool. Um, when it comes to moose and elk, they're both considered venison still, but you do not call the males and females the same as you do with the deer and the antelope. You actually call boy moose or elk, call them bulls, where you call the females cows and the young calves. Next species that I'm gonna talk about really quick is gonna be the sheep species. Now, there is technically a fifth, but I'm not gonna talk about that one because that one is more of an exotic than anything. I'll explain that one in a different video, but I'll show a quick picture in a minute. So, the main four sheep are Dahl, Stone, Desert, and Rocky. Now, we had a wonderful opportunity to go to Utah for Rocky Mountain sheep. They are mainly Montana, Wyoming, and Utah, and places like that, where doll sheep are more like Canada and Alaska, and then stone sheep are mainly like Canada, and then desert is the lower. So there's also California desert sheep, but they're still considered a desert sheep, just so you guys know. When it comes to the deserts, they are the smallest of them all. We got to hunt that in Nevada this past year. We got a nice one there. Uh, we were able to hunt Rocky in Utah, and here's the video. If you guys have not seen it, I really recommend going and checking it out. It's a wonderful video. We still can't believe it happened, and it made record book too. So we are very, very fortunate. The fifth kind of sheep is a Barbary sheep, but that one is considered an exotic still. When it comes to sheep, you call them different things. When it comes to a boy sheep, you call it a ram. When it is a girl sheep, you call it a ewe. When it is a little baby one, you call it a lamb. Now here's the thing, when it comes to sheep and moose, there's something special with them. You can do this thing called a grand slam, which means if you harvest all four species, you are one of a rare group that has been able to harvest all four of these species. So my dad is two for two. He's harvested one Rocky Mountain and one desert, but he still has not harvested a doll or a stone. He doesn't really care if he does, he's just happy that he was able to actually hunt a bighorn sheep just once in his lifetime. So things like that, uh, you can get a grand slam which is amazing to do and a super amazing opportunity if you have the chance to. Not many people do though. Now then there's also mountain goats. This guy, mainly like a mountain animal, of course, obviously. When it comes to Rocky Mountain goats, they are called different things from the sheep even. The women are called nan nanas, nannies. I've heard them both ways. And then the boys are called billies. Next up is gonna be bison. So that's this big guy. Like that you can still hunt these in certain areas. So it's not like you can't ever do that anymore. The next animal is going to be a caribou. Now those are mainly Alaska and Canada. I have actually seen them up close. So a caribou is actually a really quick cool thing. The only antlered animal that both the male and the female both have antlers. That's nuts. Uh -huh. Another animal would be the wolf. There are different colored wolves. There's also different subspecies. There's the Canadian. There used to be American, like US, but those have all been extinct because of uh, Yellowstone and just, that's a whole entire other thing. But the reason why we have wolves in the States again is because they took them from Canada and brought them to Yellowstone and then they started to disperse from there. But there's also Mexican wolves too. Now there's also coyotes, which is this guy. Some people have thought that coyotes were wolves, but they're actually a lot smaller, but that's a different thing. Next up is mountain lions, also known as cougars. Then there's also black bears, which are known as cinnamon bears. Then there is the brown bear and polar bear and grizzly bear. The brown bear is very close with the grizzly bear, but they're actually still different. And I'll explain that all a little bit later in a different video. Because a lot of these animals are super close, like you have to tell certain things. And there's also hogs. Now, a female bear is called a sow, whereas a male is, can be called a boar. I have heard it. Just like with pigs, a female is a sow and a boy is a boar. Uh, but the babies are piglets, whereas the bears, their young are called cubs. So that is it for today's video. That is just a quick rundown of some of the different species that are here in North America. A different video, I will go over the exotics, which is another huge realm of them. But I hope you guys like this. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.